Okay, so if something is done. <coughs> Allison Wonder came on today. Mm -hmm. I knew Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. March 5th. Thank you. That is great. No, uh, Arthur was asking me about that, so, you know, I thought I would, I would go, you know, and see. Uh-huh. Because, you know, since I'm here, you know. Yes, well, it's just a matter of... What does that say? Conditions. Conditions necessary for it to be a cause. Now, what's the, what's the URL for uh, the, where it is? I don't know your I.L. It's just Academy of Platonic Studies, all one word, dot com, com. dot org. Yeah, com. I can't pull it up. And it comes up. It's the first hit, really. I will try to do it. Okay. Yeah. I have my computer here, so if you want me to pull it up, it's bookmarked. And I have a modem. Okay. No, we've got to figure out how the copies are coming. i got a question. Okay. Matter of fact. Do you agree we're back to 71E for a moment? Do you agree the major quote is, uh, for it belongs to a man <clears throat> when in his <coughs> right mind, which we know what word that's going to come up to be, hmm. to recollect and ponder both the things spoken in dream or waking vision by the divining and inspired nature and all the visionary forms that were seen, and by means of reasoning to discern about them all wherein they are significant and for whom, what they portend, you know, good or bad, in the future, past, present. So, uh, 
has to be in his right oh, this mind. This is a dream. Yeah. Has to recollect and ponder. the divining and inspired me Right, by, by reasoning, right, there's a couple of other lines here that are important. <coughs> by reasoning. To discern, right, to discern the good, what's good, uh, bad, or what, what, bad in the sense of what portends good or bad both present, past, and future. Okay. Do, would you say that's a quick sketch of that section? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well then, uh, that's so the organ of divination mm -hmm. might to some degree lay hold of the truth. so that the organ of divination might function properly. And that's the gift of divination, right, which God gave to man's foolishness, the gift of divination. Well, if this is a good, right, if this is a good, the question is, and I think we can find points about this, this would be a, a section of how providence functions. <clears throat> so, if we can go back to this statement. What is presupposed? Now, it's kind of fun to see there's a that everybody dreams. Everybody dreams. And any intelligent species dreams. So therefore, let us say this person has a significant dream.
Now, for that to take place, right? It's a drain. Let's say uh, a hole of parts woven together. To carry a message of thing. take this out and just say that manifests and presents an idea thing. Would you agree this has to fit together, this has to fit into a series of dreams? Because a person has dreams upon dreams, right? There's a whole series of dreams. Mm -hmm. So we can say, we can talk about the totality about the totality. Here we're talking about a series. Would you agree if this makes any sense? Uh, if there's a series of them, then there must be a progression. Very interesting progression, right? These are the phases of a person's life, and they are right here. That dream must not only be meaningful in itself, but it has to occur right there in their lives to be utilized so you can see something about your past, right? your present, and your future. Agree? Would you not go further and say, this progression is the progression of the soul to it's a de spiritual development. Spiritual education. Pardon me, sir? Spiritual education. Louder, Judy? <coughs> education. Spiritual education. I was wondering about that word. Uh, as long as we use the word education in that nice higher sense, yes. Right. Well, development. Development, yeah. 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 And it development to, implies, you know, remembering and yes. maintaining something. Yes. Uh, for this to take place, that presupposes, right? that uh, evolves
has a permanency, right? or uh, for a present, so it has a certain status, right? And pre presents the possibility of change, meaningful change. this to take place, right? Uh, this presupposes uh, a knowledge of language communicating Analogies, right, metaphors, similes, presented as allegories, and a fantastic skill skill for multimedia drama. Dramatic presentation of a chill. Also presupposes right, a personal, personal knowledge of each individual. Of the, the dreamers present past possible future, right? <clears throat> that personal knowledge must include all the significant blocks and presentation of the pathologos. My very next question, what of the pathologos? Agree? Yes. Yeah. And it presupposes um,
expression. spiritual training and development and practice. And it presupposes something that is equally important. must also present a vividness right. it must have some kind of energy right. some vividness some energy in the way in which it presents itself and there must be a cause. And there must be conditions necessary for it to be a cause. Right? This must be a general or total and partial. Right. By that, uh, this is talking about an individual's progression. But since that can be applied to any intelligent species that dreams, dreams there must also have a vision of a total progression of all intelligent beings. wasn't, but must there not be some, in a dream, must these two things be necessary <clears throat> in order to have a meaningful dream? I mean, must you have vividness and energy? I would think. Right. Impact. And it also must have this element, right? which is a progression, you must have the progression, <clears throat> both total and partial. That is, <clears throat> if each of these people have their own particular path, evolution, stages, there must then certainly be, all of these must fit within a total progression, right? That is a model for all spiritual development. Yeah. Are we, in essence, outlining the manifestation of the world soul no. in terms of each individual intelligence within that manifestation of the universe? No. No. Because the world soul has this in its intelligible part oh. to manifest the beauty and the good. Oh. That's, that's there. As, as the model oh. of the good itself. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
No, I just wanted to, to now, uh, what you're saying fits. I'm, I'm just going to go into another step. Therefore, there must be a source for that and also for that progression that fits each individual. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yes. Those are the specific qualities of para. Mm. Neat. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Right? Especially this ability, right? See? Partial. See so this partial progression for all intelligent beings? And the way it's used particularly, Hera. That's her. According to uh, the way in which she's seen in the set of sublim subluminary arts, which is what I like. <coughs> uh, could, could we equate Hera with the moon? Pardon me? Could we equate Hera with the moon? With the muses? Moon? moon? Correct. As the manifestation <laughs> of the Great Mother. Um, it could be, but that also is one of the marks of uh, Earth in this system. So this is this is a different uh, genealogy of gods in the time as <coughs> this is the sublunary right underneath beneath the moon. See, <coughs> mundane at some time. And uh, <clears throat> we're going upwards. Where and, are we? Right? And for this to, to take place, what does it do? What does it do? It adorns, right? What does this do? It adorns the sensible universe on a high level. It adorns. Hmm. Sensible cosmos, huh? and um, and since it's uh, this this presupposes this presupposes an intellectual order. Now. Be careful, we mean by intellectual, that kind of order that the soul, the eye of the soul perceives about the nature of reality. And so, if you then, pre this presupposes therefore an intellectual order that is then we're going to adjoin the sensible cosmos, That's it. Right. But <clears throat> from my perspective, you see, all of the stuff that you've been describing here in terms of dreams, the soul's window, in terms of the material body for dreams is the moon in the chart of the person who is dreaming. The kinds of dreams, the, the type, the... And that's why I'm kind of curious because, like I say, Hera represents this archetype. And in the manifestation of the material world, the soul's likeness to all of these qualities comes through the moon in ancient, you know, tradition. I'm not, I'm not in any way uh, taking anything away from your saying. If you start with this, you can then see how he builds up these. 
Oh yes, no, I, I, I'm not having a problem with that. I'm just, you know, looking at the perspective. Can I ask where are you um, taking us back? Uh, just a second. You said that the particular, um, the vividness, the energy, and the um, mm -hmm. the progression, partial, especially partial, but partial and total, were characteristics of Hera as a sublunary. Uh, Deity. I'm wondering whether where you're seeing that is that in Proclus's commentary on the yes. time is? Okay. Okay. Because I, I just, I've been looking yeah, for. I'm working backward. I'm saying if we give this, uh -huh. let us see. If given this, we can then hold on to this and talk about therefore the conditions and causes. Perf. And remember well, how disturbing that if we don't like where we're going, we can always blame it on the person who started it. Yeah, the complaint department. Oh boy. I'll take it. That's that's a damn good explanation. I love it. Thank you very much. And uh, there you go. So let's see. Um, Like this is the field, this is the field, and now we stand back from it and we say, okay, then we can identify a set of things, and then we can name them, and what kind of a structure does it then fit into? So that's where we're going. Uh, this is, in essence, the function. Sir? This is, in essence, the detailed function this, of... This, sir. Uh, no, this, this, guy. Yeah. this yeah. is yeah. the details of the function of the manifestation of providence to each individual That's right. intelligence. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and what's important is what, which we didn't put in, uh, but we can with the idea of, of motion. Uh, there is also throughout here the assumption of a certain kind of motion, right? And, uh, And this is also why the individual must be receptive to this information and act intelligently upon it for progression to occur. Now, okay. people may recover it individually at times in history. Mm -hmm. so, um, so within this structure then, um, <laughs> I have to put in that major idea. Uh, see, the idea of progression presupposes a kind of motion, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Because everyone has their own, as it were, motion, progress, development, and Everyone, therefore, has their own destiny to play out. And the time and destiny is the word, the way to talk about it is the word measure. Uh, huh? Can you say that again? Time and destiny, the way we talk about that is the word measure? Well, um, in this game, in this game, uh, everyone has a particular, under the name, uh, okay.
a certain fate, 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 moira, fate, see. And within that, each person, therefore, as an expression of that fate, they have uh, their own past learning, right? woven into their next persona or way of life. Right. Like in the myth of Ur, they yeah, choose. this is the myth of Ur, right? They Everyone choose. goes out and they pick up one of the lots, right? That is a measure in the sense that that measures that person, right? And therefore, it has its own past and it pushes forward into one's present and future. Uh -oh. Now, uh, I was just looking at this. These two give birth to these. And these are what we're, the way he looks at these, these are the conditions necessary for these two to be causes. of course, is the uh, basic intellectual source of the forms, as it were. Uh, Rhea takes those and is responsible for the progression in total. Parties, therefore, presents all the physical manifestation because spermatic natural principles uh, of generation. The principles Here and we can say from 71E, right, going back to 71E, you have to put your mind in the right place. And there's a certain physical preparation, isn't there? Right? Because that's the time is, how to put the body in condition for divination. That's the parkings. Physical principles underlining all generation, especially in its generative quality. Now, here we had, would you agree, for this to take place, there has to be a total vision of the spiritual uh, evolution of man, right? Hey, 
that's the that's Kronos's major divisions. The ability to generate that into hierarchical forms and therefore progression is Rhea. Therefore, Hera and Zeus take that and particularize it. One more time, would you do that? Pardon? <laughs> um, could you characterize uh, Kronos, Rhea, Porky's, the way they, one more time, because I just... Now remember, this is sublunary. The same names can apply on intellectual and intelligible gods, right? So you have to keep the fact that this is a set that's functioning in this level where this is uh, in generation, perfecting generation. That's the goal of sub sublunary gods. Bringing to perfection. And I think we covered that. And uh, following that, uh, maybe, maybe we can turn the board. No, nah, we don't need it. We can turn this, but um, nah. So you can really say, what is the condition for Kronos doing what he's doing, right? What is the condition for Rhea doing what she's doing? And if we do that, um, we should be able to... to uh, We may just need to uh, save myself some work. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
to Oshana is the cause of progression and power, right? The cause of progression and power. And science gives perfection by dividing that progression such that it is then to the dividing function to the progressions, which then allows Kronos then to divide the Parsha from holes such that Rhea can put them in a progression. And uh, uh, of course, Earth and Heaven. Uh, ah, here we are. Here we are. That's, that's what I wanted. Uh, so he's going to call Earth and Heaven the leaders, the leaders of essence or of Sia. But heaven is that, that uh, magnificent description in the myth of Ur, right? When they get to, they finally have seven days, they finally reach that pillar of light, right? The axis of the whole universe, and it's brilliant and it's glowing, right? That's heaven. And It, it uh, is your see it, therefore it turns upon itself, right? It turns upon itself. It's vital, has a vitality and emotion to it. And when he wants to talk about earth, he says, uh, all of these forces finally center around its center, that's earth. And therefore, earth is in heaven, earth is in heaven, and therefore contains all of the powers of heaven joined together in a unity. And therefore can generate from it, see, can generate from it, Oceanus, therefore, once it generates from it, it generates the principle of progression. And behind it all, of course, is motion, because you see it as a motion, a power of motion. So what? Uh, see, if this is if this is the axis throughout the cosmos. It's pure fire, no luminosity. It is itself intelligible and necessarily is a goodness. Well, what he's got to show is that given this Given this, how by a reasoning process can you come down to someone having a dream last night and they get an insight into their lives? That's providence. 570, 71D, and the time is. Right? Like, how, how can you move from there to there? What are the causes and what is presupposed or the conditions for it? And this becomes, his, he compacts it into nine gods, and nine is a symbol of perfection. So uh, that's the way generation proceeds through this hierarchy in this, our physical universe, degenerative. So. So, uh, Pierre. So just to, what? Uh, is this then what you're saying, like a key? Pardon me? Is, is this then mythology or genealogy, you called it? Is it like a key then for the this conceptual is, side of the, this of is, the progression? This uh, is 42E, right, or somewhere in the time age. 
Uh -huh. oh. This is mythology. To wrap up. Or the, the sublunary gods. <coughs> yes. But that's the question now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It functions like that. Then. No, okay. So, following. Um, Gina, you're Anita tonight. See this? This is with motion and progression. <laughs> and also Usia. <laughs> so he's got to show, right, that the individual has to be in a physical state. Their body has to be in a physical state. Such as to be able to receive this, and that presupposes then that condition will bring about the right mind. Then they have to learn uh, to recollecting and ponder the dreams and visions uh, by reasoning, a way of reasoning, analysis, that then awakens the uh, divining and inspired nature of man for what? Providence, the goodness that then falls through. So this is the way of looking at dreams, what's conditioned to it, how you then can represent it in terms of uh, the sublunary gods. And it picks up from here, right? The presupposes are totality, and that's exactly what he's talking about. Yeah, it's a... Uh, here. Here. I came late. Oh, good. So I was wondering, how did you tie in uh, dreams with the sublunary gods? Is that in focus? Chalk. Well, you know. <laughs> a lot of chalk. Aside from jokes. Um, uh, was that is that in Proclus? Is that in the commentary or no? Oh, you were doing mm -hmm. it. Like, well, I took it off from seventy one. Seventy one D. Seventy one. Oh, right, right. right. Uh, this, 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 is gotcha. this is this is what he goes us. So the later section. This is what he goes. Right. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes. Okay, I'm saying, look here. From our work in dreams, we can talk about all of this. But these are the very categories that then are key terms in the mythology. I'm sorry, what were you saying? But those are the key terms in the mythology of the sublunary gods that he discusses that we were into last week. Okay. okay. Why not? Did you make a noise? Yeah, I did. I was wanting to make sure you didn't erase that. I, I was going to get close to erasing. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I thought I'd say something. Copy it all down. But give the card. See, but um, see, Proclus is interested in taking this and putting it in terms of uh, his metaphysics, which is a very fine system. Uh, but, what this is doing is saying, let's talk about this body of information called dream work, and then finding within it naturally the very concepts and key points that play a key role in the uh, personalities and descriptions of the sublunary gods. So, and I invite you all to. to Look at Propolis, and you know, you'll get upset. <laughs> because, see, he's got a different goal. He wants to then show how his point of view differs from all of the preceding thinkers. It's very interesting, but you have to dig to pull it out. Mm -hmm. so, but it's there. And, uh, matter of fact, I think I had a summary of it. I marked it in my book. I don't know whether I wrote it down or not.
He has a one nice paragraph at page 896-897, which is really uh, uh, two ninety nine D to E. Those are the Stephanus numbers for the text. I'll, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just give, read the one paragraph. It's kind of dense, sure. but uh, he picks up what we were doing on the other side of the board. If you can see it here as well, I believe. I'm skipping a phrase. Why does Plato comprehend all the multitude of gods that fabricate generation in this Aeneid? Nine gods in this Aeneid. I answer, because this Aeneid gives completion to all the fabrication of generation. For in the sublunary realms, there are bodies, natures, souls, intellects, both totally and partially. And all these are in both respects in each of the elements, because wholes and parts are consubsistent with each other. Heaven and earth, however, generate their unapparent essences, you see, of these of holes and parts. Farm, former holes according to union, the latter according to multiplication, the former according to bond, the latter according to infinity. Since they are, that is, being the leaders of essence to all things. Right? So there they starts, the essence to all things, that leader of essence to all things. Because this is turning about, this is the function of essence in dreams and in man. But ocean and tides give perfection to both the common and divided motion of them. There is, however, a different motion to different things. Hey, total intellect, a motion. Total soul, motion. And of total nature, nature, motion. And in similar matter to each of these, such as, you know, as a partial as well, you know, partial. The sublunary holes, therefore, being thus adorned and distributed, Saturn, or Kronos, indeed, divides partial from total natures, but intellectually. Rhea calls forth this division from intellectuals into all various progressions, as far as the last forms of life, being a vivific deity. But Porky's produces the titanic separation to physical productive principles. After these three are the fathers of composite natures. Jupiter, indeed, or Zeus, adorns sensibles totally, according to an imitation of heaven. For Jupiter or Zeus in the intellectual order proceeds analogous to the intellectual heaven in the royal series. Juno, or Hera, moves holes, fills them with powers, and evolves according to every progression. And the gods posterior to these <coughs> fabricate partial works of sensibles, and so on. Right, so, on. so that's very dense, but that's an interesting piece of work. Proclus. <coughs> hey, we didn't take time out for a cup of coffee, did we? So I get a cup of coffee, then we do some work. Yeah, commentary. And remember, if you have any objection, he's the one who started it, so nail him. Right, Art? Yeah. Right. All my astrological students are going out and buying tennis.
<laughs> you want to read this? Cool. Yeah. And they're all reading it and coming back. Jesus, did you see what he said? Like that? They're all excited about it. I mean, uh, but it's where it's at. I've been trying to get these things into note fashion. And I see where I start losing it, and I can come back with this stuff. God. So, 71 then is the green sequence. You know, I promised you to print out that thing, that last yeah. presentation that I did. Yeah. And and actually, I, I printed it out, and I realized I just realized upon seeing you that I left it at home on my table. But at least it's I love got you your anyway. name on it. I don't care. So. <laughs> okay. what, what? I love you anyway. Yeah, thanks. I thanks. understand this. I do it all the time.